Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, At Home with Donna. Today, we're going to be starting something new I'm excited about. We're going to be walking through the Bible with me. And I'm also going to be doing it with you guys. I'm so excited to start this on my channel. And we will do this on a weekly basis. And so today, um, this is my uh, Rainbow Bible. This one is, um, it is the Holman Rainbow Study Bible, and it's the NIV version. And so, I enjoy this Bible because it's highlighted in colors, and it has it at the bottom, what each color represents. And I, I, I've enjoyed this Bible. So, today, I thought... We would start with something great. We're going to start in the book of Matthew. And we're going to start in chapter 14. And I'm going to flip over. We're going to start off with a shorter chapter in, in Matthew. And we're going to go through this together. And read it together. And then you can, you know, let God show you what you can get out of this verse and these verses and chapter and pray about it. And you'll be experiencing something new if you've never read your Bible before. Uh, welcome. And uh, like I said, um, it's going to be fun for all of us because we're going to be learning about our Lord and Savior. Um today so and just bear with me because this is something new for me too to read um, on video so what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, Matthew 14 chapter 22 no I'm sorry it's chapter 14 verse 22 so we're starting in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 14, verse 22, if y'all would like to get your Bibles out and read along with me. And there are a lot of different versions of the Bible, so uh, so therefore it may be worded a little bit different, but um, we can all learn all the same with all of our different readings, because I have several different uh, translations of the Bible, so... Okay, so we're just going to be ourselves, relax, take this moment to spend some time with God, and uh, read uh, what He has to say to us. Now, mine has a little heading here, and it says, um, Jesus walks on water, and it gives some uh, the chapters and um, some references there. Okay, guys, so here we're going to start. Immediately... Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. So Jesus had been preaching um, to uh, a group of people, a crowd of people. And so he told his disciples, you know, go on ahead now. Y'all go ahead and get in the boat. And so um, he was telling the crowd, you know, dismissing them so they could go on. It says, After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountain. He went up on the mountain. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to get my phone to focus. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffered by the waves because the wind was against it. Okay, let's stop right there for a minute. So Jesus had been preaching to a crowd, and he told his disciples, y'all go ahead and get in the boat. And, and you know, and he said, I'm going to go tell the crowds goodbye or, you know, tell them, you know, that, He'd see him later. We don't really know what Jesus may have said, you know, but he enjoyed his time with the group of people that he was with. 
and God, uh, Jesus come to earth to, to, uh, share, uh, all that he could, uh, to tell the people about him and everything. And so that's what he did. But then Jesus, he took that time later. Um, he just wanted to be alone by himself uh, to pray. So he went up on a mountainside all by himself to pray. And, you know, I think about that, how, you know, God wants us to have that private time with him to talk to him and to go and pray. Um Go in a room by yourself, guys, to pray and talk to God. And and it's just more meaningful when you take that time alone to have that special prayer time with Christ because that's what He wants us to do. He wants to have that time with us to teach us things, to speak to our hearts through the Holy Spirit, and to lead us, you know, throughout our day and everything. And having that special time with your Bible reading is so important so that God can talk to you through his word. So, and he set the perfect example. He said he went to pray off by himself to pray. So that's what he wants us to do. And, uh, you know, when I read the Bible, I try to experience in my mind and thoughts or picture Jesus, you know, and certain things and all the people that, he talks about in the Bible, I, as we read it, I, you try to picture it and visualize it in your mind, what it looked like. But I could see Jesus so kind and talking to the crowds. And then his disciples, you know, he had 12 disciples and they followed with Jesus and, and learned of Jesus. And he was his helpers and, and stuff. And so they went along with Jesus and you know, and he wanted them to go on ahead. You know, y'all go ahead and get in the boat, and I'm going to go pray. He probably told them, I'm going to go up here and pray. And, um, you know, sometimes um, it says that uh, he went up to pray. And it says later that night he was there alone. And so, you know, we don't know exactly how long he went up to pray. You know, have you ever started praying to God and talking to him or having your prayer time and you realize, wow, an hour's went by or this amount of time has went by. So from what it says in this scripture, it looks like that Jesus had been up on the mountainside praying for, for a little while because it says later that night he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land. So you know, it was out there pretty far. So Jesus had probably prayed, you know, for quite a while. And I love that because, you know, sometimes we have times when we pray to God and it's short prayers. And sometimes when we pray to God, it's longer times that we spend with him in prayer. And every time we go to God in prayer is so important and so special. But evidently, it had been a while. And uh, so anyway, and it said the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. So evidently the waves and the wind um, must be some kind of a storm or something coming up. So let's continue to read. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Now, could you imagine if you had a big boat, sailboat, boat, whatever, and you saw somebody walking on water? Wouldn't you be scared out of your mind? I would be. If I was sitting in a boat or on a boat fishing or something and somebody started walking on the water yes i would i would think i'd seen a ghost too but they said it's a ghost they said and cried out in fear but jesus immediately said to them take courage it is i don't be afraid i love that he didn't wait around because he knew they were scared and thinking what is this but he immediately said to them take courage have courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. 
And so he had to reassure him that it was him. And it's and on verse 28, it says, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. So Peter, he, he, he's doubting a little bit. He goes, I've got to make sure this is, this is Jesus for real. So I'm going to ask him if I can come out there to the water with him. And Jesus said, come, he said. So he told him to come to him. Then Peter got down out of the boat. He got down out of the boat. Sorry about this for a minute, guys. I'm trying to get this, my Bible to focus on this right here. Here we go. He said, come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning and began. He was afraid and beginning to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Now just think, when he first got out of that boat, he actually... He walked on the water just like Jesus did. Can you imagine that? We can't walk on water, can we? What happens if we would do that? We'd go down. We'd start sinking. Well, Jesus did not let Peter sink. He was walking right on the water with Jesus. Right on the water with him. Just like Jesus was. And it says, Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began, and he was afraid and beginning to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. So he looked down at that wind and the storms and all that. And right that moment, what did he do? He first, when he saw Jesus, he was walking toward him and so happy to see him and and seeing and trying to see if that was really him. And he, he said, it is him. I know it's him. And he was so excited and was actually able to walk on the water. But when he looked down at the storm and the wind and the waves, he took his, he took what off of Jesus? He took his eyes off of Jesus and then he began to sink. And he said, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Okay, so right there, he said, Jesus immediately, right when Peter said, save me. Jesus, it, it, Jesus didn't wait. He immediately, he said, reached out his hand and caught him. Immediately. See how Jesus is, how wonderful he is. He didn't wait around to let him have fear or doubt or scaredness or anything like that. He immediately grabbed him and said, I'm here, I'm here. And that's that's what God does for our lives now. Immediately, as soon as we call out to him, he's there. He don't wait around and say, well, I'll, I'll come back. I, I, I'll come back to you in a minute. I got other things to do. Jesus don't do that. Jesus is such a loving God. He comes to our rescue right when we call out to him. He's there always to our rescue, no matter what we face, no matter what we go through. So this part in the Bible um, in Matthew 14, chapter 14, these verses right here play such an important part in about who Jesus is. All summed up in a few verses. I mean, he... Jesus was powerful, strong of what he was doing, um, teaching people about, about him, about God. And then he prayed. And it tells us about how important it is to pray, to get off by yourself. And then Jesus, like, like it's a miracle being able to walk on water, but Jesus could do anything. He could walk on water. None of us can walk on water. 
The only reason Peter was able to walk on water is because God let him be able to have that ability to walk on that water. And, but when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he sunk. So Jesus is telling us, don't take your eyes off of me. And whatever you face in life, every day you get up, put your eyes on me. Set your eyes on me every day and I will guide you. I'm there for you. I'm, I'm here to support you through your life. And it's so true. I know from my own experience, when I keep my eyes on God and uh, think on things that are pure, true, right, and just, that's what God tells us to do in, the, in his word. Think on things that are pure, true, right, and just. And when we do those things, keep our eyes on him and listen to God and let him guide our lives, our lives will be successful. And Jesus, you know, he said, you know, he reached out to him and, and grabbed him immediately. And he he loved him, you know, and he 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 called it. He held out his hand and called him. And he says, you know, you have little faith. You know, God wants us to have faith in him and trust. And he said, why? Why did you doubt? He didn't want him to doubt to doubt God. And God don't want us to doubt him. He wants us to be assured in his word and what he says is truth because God has never lied and he's there for us. If if God says he's there for us, he is. And then it says, and when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. So immediately when they both climbed in the boat, it just, the, the wind just so calmed down and it was just so peaceful. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, Truly, you are the son of God. Those disciples, they, they, you know, they were just seeing Peter walk out on that water and they got to experience and watch that moment and, and moment in time and, and saw Peter walk on the water and Jesus was out there walking on the water and it was windy and stormy and it was just a, a amazing moment for them and a scary, frightening moment for the disciples and they got to actually witness seeing Jesus's power. And then they knew immediately that he was different, that he was who he said he was. And they, they knew that he was God because they was like, wow, we can't do nothing like that. And they saw that Peter couldn't either. The only way he could walk on that water was, was because God let him be able to walk on that water. And they got to witness that. And they truly, when, when, when Jesus and Peter got in the boat, you know, they, they were in that boat and they worshiped God and, and they, they worshiped Jesus and said, Hey, he's, you're, you are who you are. We love you. And they said, and they said, you truly, you are the son of God. When they had crossed over, they landed at, uh, dinner. I can't say this word, right? Genesaret, Genesaret, Genesaret. If anybody knows how to say that word in the Bible, go ahead and say it for, for me. Um, they crossed over to that land, and when they, when then, and when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touched the hem of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. Okay, everyone, we are finished with our Bible study today and this is in the NIV version of the Bible and this was the Holman Rainbow Study Bible. Okay, finishing up and I hope you enjoyed that chapter of Matthew and we will get started um, on a new chapter and some verses uh, on my next video. Thank you guys. Love you. Bye.